Hey, welcome to Mamie Math. Today we're going to look at radian measure versus degrees. Well, think of a radian measure as just another unit of measure, similar to a centimeter versus inches and a kilometer versus miles. They're just a different unit of measure. So you've got rulers, and on either side of the ruler, you got centimeters and inches. Um, on a calculator, you can switch between radians and degrees. And then when you're traveling, uh, you can see signs that give you distances in miles or kilometers, and even on your speedometer, you can see one is miles per hour, and the inner one is kilometers per hour. So it's just a different unit of measure. So let's just go through these real quick. Okay, one unit of measure for angles is degree, which is based on a fraction of the circle, and we know there are 360 degrees in a circle. Another unit is called a radian, which is based on the relationship between the radius and the arc length. Okay, the arc length we're talking about is the one that's inside the angle, so we're, we're setting a ratio of the radius to the arc length. Okay, that's what a radian is. So we've got four concentric circles each with a radius of 1, so the first circle has a radius of 1, the second circle has a radius of 2, 3, and 4. Okay, the measure of the arc is 60 degrees, which is also a constant radian. So the measure is not the length, it's actually the uh, angle measure. So all these angles are still 60 degrees, the central angle is still 60. Okay, now let's look at the second page. Okay. Second page, we're looking at the radian measure, and we use this symbol, a theta, it's a Greek letter, uh, for a central angle of a circle, and it's defined as the ratio of the length of the arc, so arc length, um, of this angle that subtends, which is just inside that angle, um, and it's divided by the radius. So it's arc length divided by radius, so S divided by R, and that is equal to our angle theta, or our radian. So a radian is the measure of an angle theta that when drawn as a central angle subtends the arc whose, um, whose length equals the length of the radius of the circle. So again, if so one radian, one angle, so a radian of one means my uh, radius and my arc length are equal to each other. And it's close to, but not exactly, 60 degrees. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of what a radian is. Okay, the relationship between the radius and the arc length is linear, and it has a slope of 2 pi times 360, or, or 60 over 360, which is pi thirds. And if you take pi and divide it by 3, you're going to get a slope of a little bit larger than 1. It's 1.05. 1 and the slope represents the ratio of the arc length to the radius. So this slope is just 1.05. This, this ratio is the radian length of an angle. So 60 degrees is, has a radian measure of pi over 3 radians. So a a third of pi. Okay, so now let's look at the next part. Let's get to actually working these now that we're kind of getting a concept. How do you actually work with these angles? So if a central angle theta and a radius intercepts an arc or, or, that's also R, then the measure is defined as one radian. I just explained that part. Since the circumference of a circle is 2 pi R, that and an angle represents one complete rotation, that means one complete rotation all the way around the circle is equal to 2 pi because we would divide it by the arc length, right? So it would be end up being 2 pi. So 2 pi radians is one full circle, which is equivalent to 360 degrees. So 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees, so there's our conversion. But remember, we could reduce that, and that reduces to pi um, and pi radians and 180 degrees. You can just divide both sides by 2 to get your conversion. So you can write them as just fractions, and we're going to use these to actually convert. So now let's see how do you convert from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. Well, to go from degrees to radians, we're going to take our degree measure and we're going to multiply it by pi over 180 or pi radians over 180. To convert from radians back to degrees, we're going to multiply it by 180 over pi. So let's look at a couple examples of these. Okay, 
So let's first, first start by converting each measure from degrees to radians. So remember our little factor, okay, to multiply, we're going to multiply by pi radians over 180. I always think of this, you know, in science, you always want units to cancel out. So whatever unit you want to cancel out, you want it to be on the bottom. So we're going to put the 180 degrees on the bottom and the pi on top, because pi is what you want. So let's uh, simplify this. This is going to give us 30 pi over 180, and then that reduces by 30. 30 goes into itself once, and 30 goes into 186 times, so the answer is pi over 6. And that is a 30 degree angle, it is pi 6 in radians. Okay, for um, 75 degrees, you do 75 degrees over 1 times 180 over pi. Now this one's not quite as simple. Let's see, we can divide, I know 75 is divisible by 5. That's 15, so it's going to give me 15 over pi over 180 divided by 5. Is, is that right? 180 divided by 5. 36, that's what I thought. Okay, and it still reduces by 3, so let's take a 3 out. That's going to give me 5. A 3 out is going to give me 12. So that's 5 pi twelfths in radian measure. Okay, so it's pretty simple. And if you have a uh, technology, you can just use your reducing keys rather than I just have a little cheap calculator right now. Okay, converting radians to degrees. We're going to take that same ratio and just flip it. So we're going to have 180 uh, degrees over pi radians. Okay, it's the same ratio, just upside down. So we're going to take pi fourths times, and then we want degrees. What you want is on top. What you want to get rid of is in the bottom. And so we're just going to multiply these together. So the pi's cancel, and then you end up with 180 over 4. And that's just 180 divided by 4. Let's see, 180 divided by 4. Whoops, I didn't clear. Should be 45. Yep, 45 degrees. And that is our answer in degrees. Okay, here's one more. Uh, 2 pi ninths times. And again, we want what we want. The unit is on top. What we want to get rid of is the unit on the bottom. Pi's cancel. 9 goes into 8, 180, 20 times, so that's going to give us 40 degrees. And that's our answer there. So hopefully you've seen a couple of conversions to make it easier to go back and forth. Okay, and then um, we've got a couple. I, I wanted to throw one of these negative ones in here. Often we see negative angles, and that's okay because you guys have already talked about the unit circle, and you know negative angles on a unit circle just go backwards. So let's look at this two ways. Let's uh, take negative 3 pi fourths, and we're going to convert it to degrees. So let's see, we want to get rid of our pi, so the pi goes in the bottom, 180 on top. Okay, 4 goes into 180, we just did that, so that's 45. And 45 times 3 is 90 plus 45, uh, negative 135. So there's our angle as a negative angle. And you could also make that a positive angle by finding its coterminal by adding 360. So if you have uh, 360 and you're subtracting 135, that angle could also be called 225 if you write it as a coterminal angle. Okay. Next one up. Now let's apply these. How many degrees or radians does a clock's minute hand move in one minute? Okay, well, let's start off with degrees just because it's a little easier for us. Okay, we know we have 360 degrees in one, uh, one hour. So how many degrees does it um, move in a minute. Well, how many degree, how many minutes are in an hour? Well, 60. So let's divide it by 60. That means in one minute, the clock moves six degrees. So in one minute, we six degrees. Okay, but how, what is that in radians? Hmm, it's pretty small because six degrees isn't very big. Let's convert that. So we want to get rid of degrees and we want radians. 
So let's see, that'd be 6 pi over 180. That reduces, let's see, take a 6 out of this, take a 6 out of this, and that's pi over 30. So that's pi over 30 radians. Okay, so that's for one minute. Now, how about for five minutes? Well, if this is for one minute, well, then all we'd have to do is what? Multiply by five, so that's 30 degrees, and take pi over 30 times five for five minutes. Let's see, that's five pi thirtieths, and that reduces by five to one sixth. So that's pi six radians. So in five minutes, the clock moves 30 degrees, or in radians, pi 6 radians. Okay, how about when the clock is moving from 310 to 332? Okay, so 332 minus 310 is 22 minutes. Okay, well we know every one minute you got 6 degrees, so 22 minutes, let's see, 22 times 6, that's 132 degrees. So in 22 minutes, it moves 132 degrees, which is how many radians? Huh, let's go down, 132 degrees over 1 times pi over 180. Oh, this one's not going to be as easy to reduce. Okay, we can, can we divide by that by 4? Yeah. So that's going to be 33. I'm just dividing by 4. Divide that by 4, and that one's 40. Five. We've already done that, but then that reduces by 3, so let's reduce by 3, and that's going to give me 11 pi over 15. There we go. So the answer would be 11 pi over 15 in radians. So there you go. There's a little application problem, and there's one more. Okay, how many... How many degrees in radians does a snowboarder spin if he completes one and a half rotations and lands backwards? Okay, well let's think. If he goes around a circle one full time and then another half, okay, well that's pretty easy in degrees. We know one full circle is 360 and then another half is 180, half of that again. So what is that? Zero, four... 540 degrees. So there's our answer in degrees. Now how many is that in radians? Okay, well I'm going to stop and do this a little bit differently rather than just converting. Let's think about a unit circle. Okay, how many for one full rotation we know that is 2 pi. So for one rotation or half a rotation it's just pi. So if he goes one and then another half He's going to do the 2 pi for the full rotation plus pi for a half a rotation. So that leaves us with 3 pi. And that would be in radians. So there you go. Okay, a couple quick helpful hints. If you see the little degree mark, you know it's in degrees. If you don't see anything, you can assume that it is in radians. So that's kind of the the directive on how to interpret angle measures. Hope this video was helpful on remembering uh, radians and degrees.